Why are entry-level job requirements getting so ridiculous, asking for three, five years of experience, and why does the tech job market feel like it sucks now even more than ever? I wanted to start off this video with a very alarming statistic, and that is just the fact that there are less entry-level roles now more than ever, even compared to the last few years. According to data for all job listings on a ZipRecruiter, only 2.5% of the jobs are actually entry-level that don't require any actual experience. And I would assume similar numbers for other similar job listing sites like Indeed, LinkedIn, Monster.com. And this is another reason why it feels especially hard for those of you who may be entry level, who may have just graduated from college or graduated from a boot camp, to find an entry level job in cybersecurity, in tech, or honestly in any other field when you're just starting out because there are just overall less entry level job listings to go around, which also means that you're competing with other candidates of which there may be tens or even hundreds of thousands looking for an entry level role. And you're all competing for the same handful of entry-level roles. So it's no wonder that job candidates, especially right now, are having such a hard time navigating the job market and even just getting an interview after applying to even 50, 100 job listings because the competition is just crazy. I myself have also recently gotten back into the job market and I know how hard it can be even for someone with a few years of experience. Plus on top of this, if we go back to 2020 with all the college grads and bootcamp grads coming off of a global pandemic throughout 2020, 2021, and even 2022, so many internship offers full-time offers had been rescinded or even just pushed back that it made it so that the next year's graduates from boot camps and colleges going into those same entry-level roles also happened to be competing with last year's graduates and this compounding effect over 2020, 2021, 2022, and even 2023, essentially the last four to five years, means that you're not only competing with candidates for entry-level roles from your current class of 2024, if you have currently graduated this year, it also means you're competing with previous year's graduates who may not have been able to find a job during that yearly cycle after they graduated. That could be three times, even four times the amount of candidates applying for entry-level roles, of which there are already so few to go around especially ones that are actually entry level that don't ask for one to two, three to five years of experience, which now that I've come back into the job market, I'm personally looking at these junior security analyst roles, these entry level cybersecurity analyst job listings that are already asking for three to five, even seven years of experience, which is absolutely insane to me. But this is another reason why these job listings are becoming much more inflated. In fact, two reasons. Firstly, coming off of the pandemic, there were so many layoffs that targeted the tech sector specifically that many mid-level and senior level employees were laid off. These are people with five, 10 plus years of experience. And during those thousands, tens of thousands of layoffs, many of those candidates were scrambling to find a job. And because the job market was so bad, a lot of them were willing to downlevel themselves from, let's say they were originally a senior cybersecurity analyst, maybe after looking in the job market and not being able to find anything at their level, they're willing to go down a level and apply to the regular cybersecurity analyst roles that may typically ask for zero, one, two, even three years of experience. But now you have these five years, seven, 10 years of experience professionals applying to these kinds of roles so that they can more quickly land a paying job. And Honestly, I don't blame them with how rough the job market is. On top of applying to senior level roles, if you did have seven to 10 years of experience, you would probably also be willing to apply for lower level roles, even at a lower pay, because you need that paycheck to pay your bills, to keep your house, to make sure your family is taken care of. That is completely understandable. And, and honestly, anyone in the same shoes would likely make that same choice. But because of this, more and more companies see that their job listings for a cybersecurity analyst that maybe originally they would have been okay with one to two years of experience hiring, which in my case, in my last job as a security analyst, the job listing was only asking for one year of experience, which is a lot different than the ones I'm seeing nowadays, asking for three to five years of experience. But that is because the candidates that are applying to these roles may already have more years of experience and they're willing to take a lower pay for the job stability or maybe just being able to do a job that is more junior so that they have less responsibility overall and more work-life balance. There could be a lot of reasons that go into this. But because HR and recruiters and hiring managers are seeing that shift in hey, there are people with three to five years of experience willing to apply to this lower level role with the lower pay that comes with it. So we might as well just increase the bar for entry and be able to pay less for more experienced talent. And on top of that, the second reason why entry level job listings are becoming way less entry level, one of the reasons could actually be related to a CNBC quote that I recently came across. And that is the fact that many of the rounds of layoffs in the last few years have also heavily impacted recruiting and HR teams. And typically recruiters are the 
ones who know the job market best and prerequisites and qualifications are required. But throughout the last few years, many recruiting teams have been cut down by half, have basically experienced very significant cuts. And because of that, the hiring managers who are creating the job listings may be asking their own teams, well, what qualifications would you want a candidate to have to take this role? They may want someone more senior. Maybe they'll ask for five to seven years of experience. Maybe they'll ask for a CISSP certification, XYZ technical skill set that an entry level person just may not have. And normally a recruiter would come back to this and say, hey, this is for an entry level position. This is for an early career position. And a candidate with two to three years of experience will be enough to fill this role. But now there may not be that back and forth between the hiring manager and the recruiter that there just isn't as much vetting going on in these job listings so that more and more of these entry level quote unquote job listings are becoming just mid-level because hiring managers just aren't familiar with the job market and with the candidate pool and then coming back around if they don't find a candidate with the qualifications to match that cybersecurity analyst role they'll say that oh there's not enough talent there's a talent shortage that i think is just such a vicious cycle of going back and forth between having really bad job listings and not vetting through the process enough to be able to have the ideal candidate apply and actually have a chance. On top of the fact that lots of these job listings just have ridiculous qualifications that most entry-level and early career professionals just wouldn't be able to fill, even if they were perfectly capable of doing the job. And before we go on, I'd like to thank Keeper for sponsoring today's video. With cyber attacks grabbing headlines daily, we all know how important it is to protect our accounts. But staying secure online can be a hassle. That's where the sponsor of today's video comes in, Keeper. Keeper helps you create and store hyper-strong passwords, passphrases, and passkeys across all of your devices for all of your accounts. Keeper will autofill your credentials and those troublesome multi-factor authentication codes super fast so you don't ever have to search around for the right password or pull out your phone for a code. And Keeper doesn't just store credentials, you can store everything from credit cards, passports, and even notes and files securely on the Keeper app. Your data is protected with military-grade encryption and available to you on any device from your phone, laptop, tablets. So make your life easier with Keeper and get 50% off using my code with Sandra or you can give it a test run with a 30-day free trial. And my code with Sandra gives you 50% off off of Keeper personal and family plans. And you can learn more using the link in my description. And now let's get back to the rest of the video. This on top of the fact that in a recent PwC survey, less than 61% of HR leaders in 2023 said that they were hiring for entry-level roles at all, compared to the same survey in 2022, where 79% of HR leaders said that they were hiring for entry-level roles. So this also goes back to the lower number of job listings that we're seeing for entry-level. Even that 2.5% of entry-level roles that are available on ZipRecruiter and assuming similar stats for other job portals, it already makes it so hard for candidates to even start their careers. And with this trend, more and more companies are looking to hire experienced candidates over entry-level candidates. While this may make sense for companies in the short term, if this continues to be the case in the next 5, 10, 15 years, then once those more mid-level and senior level candidates retire, who is going to fill in those roles? Where are companies going to get the experienced candidates that they're then looking for 10, 15 years in the future if they're not willing to hire and train in-house any new or entry-level talent? I know this is also coming off of the boom of AI in the last year or two, where there are even creations like Devon that are literally made to replace software engineers and sure the task that an entry-level analyst could probably have parts of their job automated by AI, but I personally think that gives even more reason for companies to train their candidates, train their talent in-house to be able to work on more technical, more senior level projects compared to analyst work. We should be taking advantage of AI to be able to focus our attention on bigger, larger scale projects, especially in cybersecurity. There's always something to be done. And just because a repetitive task like creating dashboards or reports or, or querying is now done by an AI bot somewhere, it doesn't mean that it's not beneficial for a company to hire entry level professionals. Even if someone more junior may not be as technical, I do believe that they bring a new perspective, they bring a different set of experience, and they could see problems that someone more senior with five, 10 years of experience on the team may not have seen or maybe glazing over because they're so used to a certain process. So yes, I 100% believe that there is still value in having someone who is entry level or early in their career on a cybersecurity team, especially. As you guys can see, I'm very passionate about this topic and especially as someone who talks about tech careers on YouTube online. This is a problem I think more companies, more HR leaders, more hiring managers are going to have to face. You can't just keep recycling the same talent pool without ever letting in a new candidate who is entry level and giving them a chance. Even with all this, 
I still do think that cybersecurity is a good career path to choose. It just so happens that it, the hardest barrier is the barrier to entry. If you're just starting out, came across this video and maybe looking for ways to start your career in cybersecurity, I have a cybersecurity bootcamp that I recommend, which is the Springboard Cybersecurity Bootcamp, which does have a job guarantee if you qualify on their website. And basically, if you don't find a job within a certain number of months within graduating the program, you will get a full tuition refund. So basically nothing to lose. And that is one of the biggest reasons why I really like this bootcamp. They also prepare you for your CompTIA Security Plus, and they also cover technical cybersecurity concepts, various cybersecurity technical projects, and come with career support. And you can also get $1,000 off the entire bootcamp using my code with Sandra. So if you're interested, I'll have the link in my description. And about a month ago, there was a new press release released by the White House to focus on skill-based hiring, which is awesome. But I think the most important part of that press release is the fact that the White House mentioned an emphasis on on paid apprenticeships and earn and learn opportunities. There are employers out there who are no longer focusing on requiring their candidates to have a degree, but they are looking for candidates with the skills. And if someone is just starting out, they may not have the exact skill set, but someone who is willing to learn is the most valuable person that a company could hire. But the part that really impacts, that really makes or breaks this for entry level candidates is whether or not companies and organizations are willing to adopt more apprenticeships, more internships, more rotational programs, more co-ops, anything for students, for entry-level people. Personally, I started my career in a cybersecurity rotational program. My biggest advice for job candidates is to build a really solid technical project portfolio with at least three technical projects. As more of the industries start shifting towards skill-based hiring, it's going to be really important about how you can talk about your personal project, what technical skills that you have, how quickly that you can show or prove that you can pick up skills, and also focusing on more practical exam certifications. Essentially a certification with an exam that is practical, that that isn't just multiple choice. Of course, excluding the Security Plus because I still think that is one of the most on paper sought after HR certifications for cybersecurity beginners. But other than that, there are lots of certifications out there nowadays that have exams that are practical, and those are definitely very valuable and experiences that you can also talk about during interviews, which also helps you prove to a hiring manager or an interviewer that you've had some tangible experience. I have my cybersecurity interview mastery prep course linked in my description, and it covers the types of cybersecurity projects that you should go over and have on your resume and have to talk about during your cybersecurity interviews. So all of this on top of the fact that overall job listings as a whole have gone down 15% at the end of 2023. And even comparing to a stat from LinkedIn for a ratio of active applicant versus active job listing, this used to be one-to-one. -one. For every one applicant, there was one open job listing, but now that number has changed dramatically to a one-to-two ratio, where there is one job listing for every two job applicants on LinkedIn. This doesn't only apply to entry-level jobs, but it applies to all the jobs overall listed on LinkedIn, which, which is another sign that companies are just not hiring as much. And that also gives another reason for more senior candidates to apply for more junior level roles because overall there just aren't as many jobs out there for them to apply for. All right, so this all sounded very grim and upsetting, but what are the final takeaways? In my opinion, for candidates, the number one thing is to focus on building your skills. Focus on a strong project-based portfolio, and I'll have my course linked in my description. But for companies, their main focus should be to bring back more internships, more apprenticeships, and I'm not talking about unpaid internships. I think especially in tech and cybersecurity, you should be getting paid for the work that you're doing. It's not like we're asking for six-figure salaries for an internship, but I really do think companies should be paying talent, even if they're entry-level, for their work. But this along with co-ops, more rotational programs, creating ways for entry-level talent to be able to actually get the experience that they need to no longer be entry-level. There just seems to be a huge reluctance for companies to pay to train their own talent that they just want talent from other companies. But if you train your own talent, you'll be able to teach them the exact skills that they need without spending tens of thousands of dollars hiring for a perfect candidate. All right, so that is it for this video. I think it might have been a really long one, but thank you for sticking with me. Thank you guys so much for watching. Let me know your thoughts on this in the comments below. Don't forget to join our Discord channel to join the conversation. This is a common topic that comes up there, so I would love to have you join us, and hopefully I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye! Thank you.